So the first thing we have to talk about as we talk about a scientific method is the idea of asking questions because like we talked, science starts with asking questions. Scientists are always asking questions. They're questioning everything. Now arguably you can't find a problem unless you're looking around you. So observation is sometimes put first. But that doesn't really make sense because everybody's looking around. It's noticing things that actually matters. It's actually trying to focus on something that actually matters. So identifying the problem is the beginning. You can't really solve anything if you don't have anything to solve. You know, I usually kid around with my students and I say, I'll give you an instant A to anybody who can answer this question. And there you go. You would never win the A because without a question, you can't have an answer. And that's in itself a easy way for you to remember that the first step of the scientific method is asking a question or identifying a problem. It's without this problem, there is no need to apply the method to find a solution or to explain something. Now, this problem might be something old or something new. And by that, I mean sometimes scientists focus on understanding something that has not been explained yet. Say, for example, we don't really know exactly how the brain works. That's a great question. You know, so that we learn a lot about it, but we haven't learned ex enough to replicate it, to control it. So we don't not there yet. We, there's a lot about the brain that's still a mystery. So that's a new area of study. There's a lot of new stuff there. We also don't know too much yet about genetics. We know so much. But the more we try to find, the more we realize there's still so much to learn. So there's a lot of new stuff there. We don't know why the universe keeps expanding faster and faster, almost close to the speed of light, even though gravity is slightly contracted. We call it dark energy, but we don't really explain it. Focusing on such new questions is one area in which science tries to do. But scientists also try to focus on challenging old ideas that some people would consider established. For example, you may think that the theory of evolution has been the same since Darwin came up with it. That would be crazy. So much has been changed about the way we understand how evolution works and what it is since Darwin talked about it. And he wasn't even the first one to talk about it. So as you see, science is constantly changing, and therefore, it's challenging the old ideas, even ideas as established as gravity. For example, most people still think that the idea that Newton came up with in, in a long time ago, centuries ago, that objects fall, is the correct way to interpret gravity. But Einstein challenged that old idea, and now we understand gravity in a better way. Objects do not fall. We'll talk more about that in this lecture series. And so... Scientists ask questions to challenge old things and to try to understand new things. But whatever it is, it always starts from a general idea, a general question, something that I want to understand. For example, why is the sky blue? Well, the sky is blue because it's full of nitrogen. And nitrogen is a chemical that absorbs the wavelengths of light of several colors but absorbs a little less blue. So more blue gets reflected when hitting nitrogen than other chemicals and so since the sky is mostly nitrogen the light when the sun hits the, the sky is going to be mostly appear to be blue so when you look at the sky at layers of layers of nitrogen you're actually looking at a blanket of nitrogen and so you're looking at blue and oxygen kind of has a blue bluish hue as well and so both of them put together which are the two most common gases make it be blue but to get to that answer, you would have had to ask a lot of smaller, more specific questions to answer that general question. So it usually starts with a general question, but then it goes to more specific questions. So the, the method repeats itself until you find the ultimate answer. But even then, the answer might be challenged or understanding might change of it. So my, the explanation I gave may be simple enough, but then you might ask yourself, Wait, well, hold on a second, why is nitrogen reflecting blue and not the other colors? So you see how there's always another question that you can ask to be more specific. But you would have to start with why the sky is blue. And then you have to say, well, Ben, what makes color? What is color? Then you will have to ask questions about light and how light works, reflection, refraction. Then you have to understand things about chemicals and how chemicals reflect and reflect light. Then you may think to yourself, what's the chemicals that's more common in the sky? Can I replicate that in the lab and create some sort of experiment where I put this, the chemicals in the atmosphere in exactly the same proportion and then play around with the levels and try to figure out exactly what the sky is? That's science. Trying to answer question after question until you get closer and closer to the ultimate answer. Now, all these questions can be rephrased in the form of a statement that we call the problem statement. And we do this for the purpose of writing lab reports. It's basically the purpose of the study that you're doing. 
And what you do there is you rephrase the question that you have in this format, the effect of blank on blank, where the first blank is what we call the independent variable or what you're manipulating or changing, and the second blank is the dependent variable, which is what you are uh, measuring or what responds to the change because of what you did to the independent variable. So in the example that we talked about, it will be like the effect of nitrogen on the color of the sky. And we talk more about this when we talk about how to write a lab report and how to do a problem statement. So I suggest you watch that video because the problem statement part of the lab report ties in with asking a question. So go watch that video now so you can learn a little bit about how to do that and at the same time be ready to write all the lab reports you will write for this class throughout the year.